Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Collage Artists of America Mixed Metaphors Virtual Reception. Uh, I'm Pat Bates. I am the representative from the San Fernando Valley Arts and Cultural Center uh, and our SCORE project. I was noticing tonight the um, S our project is going into its second year as a virtual exhibit platform after uh, falling victim to the COVID. Um, our uh, brick and mortar gallery was forced to close. Collage Artists of America was only our second virtual exhibit in February, 2021. I cannot believe we're over yeah. a year down the road from that. We're pleased to have CAA back for its third virtual exhibit. And let's see what we've got here. Um, I just have to make a personal comment. Boy, I know how that guy feels. So, <laughs> I, I cannot begin to tell you and you don't wanna know. So uh, it, it, it just, uh, it, it made my day uh, when I saw that. I, I can't begin to um, tell you my reaction. And uh, here is our SCORE logo. We, we thank our uh, LA County Arts and Culture and the De City Department of Cultural Affairs. And we're thrilled to have everyone here. And I'm pleased to turn you over to uh, Sylvia Golden, who is, I, if I'm incorrect, tell me, but I believe she's our exhibit chair. So thank you. And I'm going to stop sharing right now. And Sylvia. Hi, thank you, Pat. Welcome, everybody. Uh, it's so exciting to see everybody and are looking forward to the uh, Mixed Metaphors show <clears throat> that we have tonight. And uh, welcome to the members, non-members and guests. Uh, I want to congratulate all of those who entered our show and were accepted and, in, uh, and uh, to each of the award winners. Um, it's now my pleasure to introduce you uh, to our uh, esteemed juror, Robert Burridge, who will say a few words about the jurying process that he uh, and his thoughts about how he selected Bob. Oh, well, oh, thanks. Thank you, Sylvia. But it's always a big mystery to everybody. Uh, you know, how did I get in? There must be a trick to make sure I get in. And guess what? There is not a trick. And this is a great honor because I had so many wonderful paintings uh, that I get to choose from. And I like this technique because I could give, go back over and over and over and over, over several days until I kind of figured out which ones I think I only had about five or six or seven top awards out of that and how do you choose those things it's always a big question well first of all I, I like the title very much I thought the title was fantastic and some of you embraced it and some of you said oh the heck with it I'll just do whatever I want to do but the ones that got my attentions were the ones that I kept going back to um the metaphor was Fabulous, the visual metaphors, you know, the elephant in the room and the exploding heads and, and all the, see, the things that were memorable. And that's important to me in a painting, especially when it's an abstract and you're trying to, the word is communicate. And these are the ones, the top winners for me were the ones that really spent some extra effort in thinking about how to communicate the concept. They did a pretty creative job too. I just thought it was just great that they did that. But I also liked with some of the winners were three-dimensional. How, how nice was that? And uh, some very flat, so almost like prints. So great job for those of you who got in there at the top. And, uh, and congratulations to everybody who got into a show like this. It was magnificent. I hope you have a chance to go online and see everybody's entries. And it's a fun show to look at too. That's the other thing that was great to do. And so I'm uh, totally an honor for me to give my opinion on, on how, I, how I jury a show. It's the ones that keep drawing my attention and I keep, keep coming back to and has nothing to do with your technical skill. Surprise, has nothing to do with your technical skill. It's, it's, that, it's that powerful 
song in your heart? And how many times have you heard that? So uh, I'm going to hear your voice. And when people look at your artwork, they're not looking for something you did years ago. They're looking for what's in your heart now. So what a great opportunity to jump in on this program. I, I thought it was a great assignment. And I, I like programs like this where they give you an assignment. There's your goal. Okay. Mixed metaphors. What are you going to do with it? So congratulations to those of you who made it to the top and everybody else who didn't make it to the top. Keep on going. You never know. You never know. All right. Good. Well, thank you. Thank you, Bob. And thank you for the wonderful selection and this wonderful, fun <laughs> show. It's, it really is interesting yeah, yeah. and thought provoking. You did a great job. Thanks. Uh, and now I think it's time to present our awards. So, uh, for an honorary mention, we are um, going, or was there something else, Pat? Oh, excuse me, Sylvia. I, I think Pat needs to share her screen to, uh, yeah, there she goes. Oh, oh there. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, we're going to start. Uh, our first honorary mention is with our own <laughs> wonderful technical advisor, Barbara Tabachnik, getting oh. an honorable mention for her piece, can't see the forest for the wax. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Barbara, would you like to say a few words about your piece? Okay. Uh, well, I'm an experimental artist. With song, try just about anything. I tend to be more focused mm -hmm. on uh, methods and materials than content. Here, uh, I was exploring creating contrasting textures on various small, uh, small substrates, foam board, mat board, ripped cardboard, and then layering them on a cradle board and then covering the whole thing with a uh, few layers of encaustic medium. And I love the theme because it gave me a chance to play with words as well as materials yeah. and methods. Yeah. And that's kind of where I am. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for choosing this, Bob. <laughs> well, no, I thank you for having a really strong voice. That's how I like it. You know, this was not like anything I had ever seen before. You know, and, and I don't know if it was a martini in a basketball game or I don't know what it was <laughs> going on there. But, and I didn't care because I just love your creativity and your chutzpah. So congratulations. Thank you. Really. Yeah, it was, it's it's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I like the basketball, the martini. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, thank you both. Uh, uh, is Ju Lucy Julia Hale here? Because she's our next uh, honorary mention award winner. Uh, yeah. Lucy, if you speak, I may be able to find you more easily. Okay, I'm here. There you are. All okay. right, uh, let me just finish her piece, Lucy Julia is honorary mention and she for her piece mid-century men playing with matches made a double standard mm -hmm. end game <laughs> lucy tell us about your picture well um i have always loved to look at the pictures that any kind of mass-produced illustration of any kind that seemed to witness somewhere we had been as a culture. I am speaking to you from Cave Spring, Georgia, and I've been spending the day uh, working with politics because my representative is Marjorie Taylor Greene, and I grew up here, and uh, this piece, it, it struck me, it's from a, a, a part, most of it's from a decorating magazine, and it struck me as something that was funny, but also quite serious, and yeah. I have always, I think that Me Too and a lot of things that have happened show us that the past is really not the past, and <laughs> we, we build on it for good or bad, and uh, that's part of what this is about. And I was just blessed to find uh, at the library in my hometown, uh, Dada, when I was quite young. And then when I went to university and in art and philosophy, um, I was really helped by that notion of deconstruction. Uh, mm -hmm. I had to do that once for a teacher about uh, Faulkner's uh, macho little short story the bear but in any case um deconstruction leads me to the really tremendous sort of treasures that i had gotten from donna in that your subconscious 
gives you optimism that there are things that you know mm -hmm. that you may have been told the opposite that were lies. And mixed wow. metaphors was perfect for me. I grew up where I learned black people who were colored people then were wily. They would outsmart you all the time. You had to watch them so carefully. And they were dumb. They really didn't have human intelligence. They were more like animals. That struck me very early as impossible. Uh, you know, the, the contradiction there. So I want to just say one thing about this piece. I just discovered it today, but it is something that I do and lots of things that I do. I let my subconscious pick some pieces and I don't really know why they're there. And I just realized that the stripper who's on the left in this picture is she who's emerging into this unsuspecting wife's living room. She's coming out of her drawers. <laughs> so you know, that's, that's what your subconscious can give you in a piece. <laughs> Thank you, Lizzie. My gosh, oh my gosh. Boy, I want whatever you're on. <laughs> no, 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 it's great. No, and, and you're right, it's hilarious. I wrote, I made some notes uh, earlier on, on your piece. That it's hilarious. I got the joke and it has a great sense of humor. And so I appreciate your sense of humor. It had that Palm Springs or Key West kind of a feel to it in that you know what is the 60s i guess mm -hmm. you know we we thought we were so comfortable and so hip and just look how uncomfortable they are in those chairs that they and i used to be a designer an industrial designer and so i always thought that stuff was so hip and cool but now i see how uncomfortable now i know it's can't be key west because they got a fireplace going on in there so maybe it's palm springs it's palm i don't springs. know but uh i thought it was a great i, I just loved it maybe feel it made me feel fresh so good for you i mean without any painting going on it just pure collage work and uh, i like your imagination so and certainly your vision well you do have a sense of uh, of humor and a, and a great sense of purpose so congratulations keep your voice by the way keep that voice yeah yeah yes very much so thanks yeah yeah, thanks. yeah, yeah. Um, all right, our next honorary mention goes to Kristen Dexter. Her, mm. piece, her piece is, the windows of opportunity were passing to change the leopard's heart. <laughs> Kristen, are you here? I am here. Oh, yeah, great. So I'll say a few words about your piece. I'd love to hear them. <laughs> Well, I, I like to use a sense of humor in whatever I do. And I have to say that I almost didn't enter this because I had trouble wrapping my head around the mixed metaphors. And I wanted to use the um, lobby of the Peabody Essex Museum. I thought it was beautiful. I had it out to work on a piece. And then all of a sudden it came to me that maybe windows of opportunity could be flying across it. And I've been using a lot of animals in some of my work, um, putting their faces over um, court costumes, et cetera. So it just kind of came together with the stoic leopard and the heart sick giraffe. I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> and of course, with the help of Cupid at the top. So I mean, it's really simple, but I, I, I thought it was um, pretty funny. Very nice, thank you. I agree with it. It's very, I thought it was hilarious, but thought provoking more than anything and got my attention to like, what's going on here? That's what <laughs> I like about it. It's like, I had to stop. It's not, you know, whimsical in that, in that sense. It, it, it's a, it looked like it was, it, it, it needed more attention than I needed to give it. And so I had to stop and look at this. It's like it's more intellectual than I wanted to put into it. But it looked so, um, poetic. It looked Shakespearean, but it, I certainly like the execution and the colors. Very, 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 very professional. Very, very yeah. impressive. Thank nice you piece. very much. Thank no, you. no, it's thank you. It's just a really beautiful piece. Yeah, great. I, uh, I, I'm drawn by the Cupid. Uh, similar yeah. to Bob, it really draws you in. Yeah. You want walk through this place and go, where is this? But I love Cupid looking down and saying, I'm going to take care of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, there's a lot to look at. That's what I thought it was like, oh my gosh, what is going on here? And I better pay attention. So yeah, it looked like it was not, yeah, nice piece. Thank you, thank you. 
Uh, now, another honorary mention goes uh, to Kim Svoboda uh, for her piece. How does your garden grow? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> How does your garden grow? So, Kim, are you here? Did I hope I said your name correctly? I'm here. I'm here. Can you? There. Hi. Svoboda, you said it just fine. Um, and I'm. I'm thrilled to be here. I'm a new member of Collage Artists of America. I've been um, kind of like returning to my work, um, to my work on paper. And, mm. um, and I live in New York City and I'm probably one of the plainest people you know. I don't wear makeup. I don't wear jewelry. And I am, and I love, but I am passionately in love with jewelry. So you can see <laughs> the um, jewels that are hidden, you know, are growing on my collage. And um, I work abstractly. And this was, I just enjoyed making this collage. And it's like, oh, wow, it's a garden. It's my looking out my window. And, um, and I enjoyed it very much. And I'm Thank, I'm honored to be receiving this honorable mention. Wow. Thank you. Well, yeah, congratulations. I hope to see lots and lots of more of these from you and uh, your first time, so to speak. And it's so strong graphically, you know, so such a strong graphic design is bold. And, and yet you have these delicate lines in there. And it's that kind of that calligraphy, which I like so much in a, in a drawing that's so strong graphically like that. So anyway, the colors are great. And uh, it just seemed like you um, enjoy drawing and painting at the same time. So yeah, and you, and you had a sense of purpose. So congratulations, by the way. I, I actually love this piece a lot too. Uh, I'm a congratulations, <laughs> congratulations. Yeah. I guess I have some friends here. <laughs> okay, great. Um, before I present the next award, the Carol Ann Watterson Award, I want to say it's made possible by a generous um, endowment from her estate. And to honor her memory, the award is given to a work that reflects her simplicity and elegant style. And now to present the Carol Ann Watterson Award, it goes to Carol Tannenbaum for her piece, Rise and Shine. Can't push back the day from happening. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I know. I let her talk. Are you here? Uh, is she here? Carol Tannenbaum, are you here? Okay, then, uh, Bob, did you, you might like to say, I'd be happy to talk about this. I, I love, and you're right, I didn't even know anything about this award is the, or the background to the award. But what I did like about it was the simplicity, the graphic design, and that communication. Look what was going on right there. And it took me a couple of times to look at this, quite frankly, do I got it? You know, this whole thing that's, that's going on out there in the world. And uh, I just love the graphics of it. I love the simplicity of it. I love the strength of it. I love the imagination of it. Um, it's a pretty strong voice to have, and so I believe this artist uh, should get this award. And I didn't know about the background uh, of this award, which is pretty interesting, uh, simplicity and graphic design and all that. So it seems to have worked out. Uh, of, course it, of course it worked out. But the drawing on it is beautiful. Congratulations, artist. Okay, now we're going on to our third place award to Gail Glickman. Are you here, uh, Gail? Is Gail here? Oh, another one missing in action. Her oh, bad. Yeah. Anyway, Gail's uh, piece, it was nice to see a three-dimensional. Uh, her, piece, her piece, wait a minute, Bob. Her piece is named <laughs> Bullet, Bulletproof. <laughs> Bulletproof, right. right. <laughs> and uh, there you go. Well, it was memorable, of course. You know, first of all, it was one. It was one of the few three-dimensional pieces, so that's helped it to stand out. And then not only did it stand out, it was memorable. 
And it was not a lazy piece. This artist had a vision, which I, I, I like that. And uh, what are they trying to say? You know, with the bullets, the butterfly, yes, the whole back and forth thing. Um, I thought the imagination was great and certainly original and a strong uh, statement and uh, a good, strong political statement. Anyway, uh, I thought this artist was just fabulous. I'm sure this artist is well known somewhere. I did not know this artist, but um, I hope she continues doing great artwork. It's such a great piece. Anyway, thanks for showing that to us. Really, and the execution is impeccable. I think it's just beautiful. Oh, yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. incredible, yeah. Okay. So much fun to see good artwork from everybody. Jeez. <laughs> I love really it. Good. You have no idea, everybody. I get to see all this stuff, and I, I didn't even have to get on an airplane. <laughs> So great. Um, all right, moving on. Then our second place award winner is <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer Robertson for her piece. Are you here, Jennifer? I'm here. Oh, wonderful. Thank the you. name of her piece is Elephant in the Room. Yeah, and no mistaking about the mixed metaphor there. No. <laughs> <laughs> and go ahead. If you have a few words to say, we'd love to hear it. Thank you. I'd like to thank uh, Robert Burridge. Um, it's a great honor to receive this award and also to be part of a, a truly amazing and diverse and creative show. Uh, so I'm very, very uh, happy. Um, I am a cut and paste uh, collage uh, artist. And uh, at the beginning of the year, I was starting to rummage through and sort out some of my flight magazines. I used to travel a lot to Sri Lanka where of course the elephant is uh, sacred. And you see some images from Sri Lankan airlines uh, in the back there. And I had nature calendars uh, with lots of uh, exotic animal pictures, uh, newspapers uh, from which I took this, um, these dancers. And I wanted to play with um, contrasting elements and also different shifting planes. And so as I assembled things on my table, I, I got the elephants and I thought, you know, um, as a, a newly retired academic, I was always dealing with elephants in the room, <laughs> faculty <laughs> meetings. And uh, Julia, you know, Hale was mentioning politicians and Marjorie, Marjorie Taylor Greene and some of her other unmentionable colleagues uh, in the Senate and the House of Representatives. I mean, they are elephants in the room and, you know, in our society. And I think, you know, we need to start paying attention to what is there and is becoming increasingly more intrusive. Um, and of course, the dancers are like, oh my gosh, you know, it's really true. There is an elephant in the room. But um, I wanted to be playful. Uh, a lot of my work uh, also has a lot of irony in it and tensions between the serious and the frivolous. Uh, so I think in the back of my mind, uh, for this piece, uh, even before I heard of the show, I definitely did have a, a kind of a metaphor, but a metaphor that would emerge, uh, a mixed metaphor that would emerge in your face, um, uh, as it were. And I, I just thought that it, it summarized um, uh, so much about breaking up planes and the, the secularization of, of uh, the, uh, the sacred and all other kinds of tensions that, you know, one can read into this. It was great fun uh, working on this particular piece. And of course, the colors and um, the fluidity plus the um, linearity of some of the architectural elements. Oh, thank you again. Thank wow. you, Jennifer. Delightful. Bob? Well, I, I, I could not have said it better. I want to tell you, you're so articulate about it. <laughs> and, uh, and I agree. And that's, these are all the, all the things you said were the reasons I've chosen it. Mine are more simpler than, than uh, <laughs> your thought process. No, no, no. I, I, thank you so much. <laughs> you know, obviously, I went for the graphic impact and mm. the the shock of it and the size. And you were right, and you touched on that. The ridiculousness of the size of it just made me laugh so hard. And obviously, <laughs> I had to keep coming back to it. Mm. And as I keep mentioning the artworks and all these pieces. The artwork that allows me to come back and revisit it over and over, for whatever reason it's calling me, uh, whether it's aesthetically or they're telling me a story, there's some connection with me. I just choose it and it's 
it doesn't matter if it's technically beautiful or and the person is like like photorealism or if they're super abstract as long as they communicate the concept uh otherwise i why am i looking at it and so mm -hmm. this i mean you talk about communicating the concept <laughs> it made me laugh so hard mm -hmm. <laughs> so i want to thank you for letting me laugh so hard sure yeah yes execution was great and the imagination of course and yeah. i want everyone to more importantly uh, i would like you know here was an opportunity for an artist to take this theme and and go beyond not that not the normal expected and, and to take that as a kind of like a, a class assignment you know i, I still look at the stuff as class assignments i love art school exactly. and i know you do and 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 you take it as a class assignment and what are you gonna do are you gonna be lazy about it or really dig into it so it's a way to keep your uh, imagination uh, flowing. And I really congratulate you. I thought the piece was just fantastic. Thank so, you. And I, I guess I just want to remind people too, you know, you can't any longer ignore the elephants in the room. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks for reminding us. Okay. Right. Yeah, thank you, Jennifer. And thank you, thank Bob. You. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> now for our first place award. <laughs> are you here with us trudy i don't think she is i oh. oh oh that's sad because she always has so many nice things to say well her piece is called guess what he's lost <laughs> his marbles and uh it's a wonderful piece bob yeah i obviously i mean you talk first of all it communicates it really well <laughs> and it's number two, um, uh, an image you can't forget real quickly. That's the other thing that is so beautifully done. Number three, the execution and the quality of the, the actual technique and the skill level is mm -hmm. just, um, I mean, right on. I mean, and also, I mean, I could go on and on and on. I mean, the, the chutzpah of having that green <laughs> background. I mean, my, are you kidding me? I mean, and, and and the and the green going on and whatever's going on up in the top there and this kind of like black and white etching and, and most incredible feeling i mean what a great imagination it's so joyful to see new artwork and i mean that new artwork and this is what i feel like about you guys and so you, you you've been blessed you've been so blessed <laughs> Do, do something that no one's ever, ever, ever seen before. And I've never seen anything like this before that just cracked me up. So <laughs> this really, it just cracked me up. And I got it right off the bat. I mean, how can I forget this about losing your marbles, right? And, all that. and I mean, well done, just well done. End of subject. So I, I congratulate everybody actually uh, put their efforts into this show. And uh, it's a great lesson, actually, for all of us. Those that maybe didn't make it to the top, now you know that you kind of have to pick yourself up and keep going a little bit more than you thought you could go. And, and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to encourage you all, you know, just because you didn't get a blue ribbon, you know. But it, does, it just means there are others that got blue ribbons before you did. It's just that simple. So don't base your life around that whole kind of collection, please. But go for your imagination. That's what people want to know about what's going on inside your head. Explosions. <laughs> Explosions. <laughs> I know. I mean, look at that. Really, they have no idea what goes on inside your head. So let's let them have a good time with you. Thank you for the opportunity. Do it. Do I need to look at any more paintings? Uh, well, I, you. Uh, what we're going to do now is um, open it up to some of the members that are present that would like to speak about uh, their piece of, in the show. Yeah. Uh, so if you'd like to just stick with us and uh, if you can. Yeah, the answer is yes, I'm, I'm and, here. Uh, and then if you want to comment, you will. And if, uh, if you don't want to, you don't have to. No, uh, I, I should tell you that uh, it's not fair for them or me. I mean, I don't do a, an actual critique of a paper. I'll make comments. It's just, it's just the pieces in the show. Yeah, just this piece that was in the show. So I'm happy yeah. to make a comment. That's all. Yeah. Happy that, to do that. Yeah. 
I just want to say one thing about the, the first place one. Uh, we, I think that all of us during this last two years have lost our marbles now and then. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, so uh, I guess ba uh, Barbara and uh, Pat will have to take this part over and uh, you in uh, uh, attending, any of you have a piece in the show that you'd like to comment about uh, or share ideas with us about your piece. This is where I get in trouble. This is where uh, I get Barbara, uh, Barbara Bring it off. Pat, do you want to take over from here? And okay. Um, now, uh, Pat and I are going to monitor the chat. So if you have a piece that you'd like to talk about, uh, put your name in chat. Hopefully, either Pat and I will find you and call on you, and then she'll spotlight you, and I will spotlight your art. So please, uh, ah, Karen Schiffman. Karen Schiffman. Okay, Karen, uh, let me find Works your out. work. She goes. And you have three pieces. Which one would you like to talk about? Karen? You oh, have to anyone <laughs> at all? Karen, you have to pick a piece because- Yeah, the problem is um, um, the one that's not a face, Okay. Because they both have like the same title. <laughs> Hi, Karen. Hi. Okay, and then uh, Barbara, Barbara, will you be uh, sharing your screen for this or do you want Oh, to you're not saying, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I lost my screen share. I actually- Hold on, I, I can, I'll do it right this second. Thrown, I was thrown off uh, Zoom, but I- Oh, here. there you go. You're All right. Yeah, that, there we go. So um, before the theme came around, I had started to make a small concertina book. And I decided before I even, um, you know, made any work for it, that it was going to be called Feeling Blue. So um, obviously the metaphor of that mood and this is just um, the first uh, the first page of the book, and um, every every little element in the book is blue or has blue in it. And of course, the idea of holding that um, handkerchief, if you will, is an indication of how blue one one can get. So um, I work a lot with vintage um papers and materials mm -hmm. and um that that's you know this is just one wow. of the pages and thanks for selecting them wow wow okay thanks karen you know <laughs> thanks for telling me about that you know it's amazing how so uh, uh, artists will latch on to uh, a motif, like say, I'm only going to be working with vintage materials and papers and old images and things like that, maps and that kind of thing. I think that's pretty amazing that people do that. And and I don't do that. <laughs> I just tell you, let you know. And that's why it stands out to me is that there, there are those who hold on to the, to the history and do things with maps and things like that. And, and ships, and I don't do that. But what I liked about this image, by the way, it reminded me of an illustration for a magic trick. Uh, uh, the magic trick of the, it's called the, the, co the color changing silk. It's a very famous magic trick and every boy has uh -huh. this, every boy has this trick. Oh, and, thanks, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I know, it, kind of, it goes from green to red. We all have one of those. And that's what is, I really love this piece. So, you know, even though it may not have the intention of where you were going, it got my attention. So do more of those. That's great, by the way. <laughs> was Thank great. you. No, no. Uh, it's fabulous. And a great drawing, by the way. Fabulous drawing. Your imagination is fabulous. Don't you change. Do more, please. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you, Karen, Bob. And who else is up? Anybody else? Holy cow. Uh, Kui Lin. Okay, there's a, there's a piece called 
old as the hills have eyes with skies. Okay. Barbara, uh, 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 when you get done with this one, S.P. Harper uh, had her name in, or his, I don't know. Okay, which one, I'm sorry again, which one did you want to It's on? the one with green and the rows of flowers. Green. It's the one on the left which says yeah, ah. right. hills. This one? Lies. Yeah, yes, that's the one. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, I wanted to thank Bob Burridge for picking three of my pieces for the show. It was like a real feather in my cap because I had- well, good. Oh, I, I had trouble with the concept. I mean, it was like I went round and around and around and had to do huge research to figure out what, what mixed metaphors really meant yeah. to me. So, so wow. I, anyway, came up with, with old as the hills with eyes, have eyes with skies. And oh, it's wow. basically, it's the, the stack scene is um, from a trip. It's a train. It was from a train ride that um, I took to San Luis Obispo area. And uh, it, it was very hilly and green at the time. And then I um, did computer um, things on it and incorporated old photo images. And, um, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and one of them is from a drawing I did of a, of a witch actually in a voodoo paper doll book, but you know, it, basically a lot of it was about age. You know, you get older and, and you're old as the hills and you feel old as the hills and uh, your eyes uh, are old as the hills. And, and it doesn't matter, they, they may be old as the hills, but you can still see and you can watch. And, and, and the person who is um, looking at the hill can, can sense all the, the watching that goes on in, you know, of them and, and, and lots of uh, different wow. people. The eyes have, you know, the mm. eyes start migrating to the skies from the hills and, and kind of like that. But I had a, I have had a uh, situation with my um, uh, cataract surgery where one of my replacement <sighs> um, lenses went bad. And, um, and I was really feeling my vision issues when I did this. And then miraculously, two days ago, I went into the um, ophthalmology department and they announced to me that yes, they could probably fix it in five minutes. So I yeah. went in and they fixed it in five minutes and it's like, yeah. two days and yeah. that's what I can see. So I'm not as, I don't have as aged eyes as I did when I did this piece. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very congratulations. Much. I have a, I have a question, Quilin. Yeah. Yes. This is SP. I, um, those images, are those gemstones, cut gemstones that recede back into the eyes? And um, are, did you draw any of the things? Are they, where did, where did you source some of the, oh, okay. like the hills and are those gems? Okay. I don't think they're gems. I'm not sure. I, I don't recall. I think they're much. flowers. Yeah, some of them are flowers. Okay, the, the oh, ones that you see are flowers. I, I, I see. My husband gave me two um, flowers and I, I put them, and as they aged, I took pictures of them and then uh, um, I manipulated them. And so I have ah. this progression going from wow. relatively fresh, wow. not that relatively Easy. fresh, right. going back to aged eyes. You know, they were like substitutes for eyes. And the other images were from postcards. Some were um, like, they're, they're digitally traced and duplicated um, in reverse. There's really a lot of different sources. One is a drawing, the one in the, the big head on the left with the white hair is from a, a paper doll book I designed for Dover Publications called Rudy Paper Dolls. So they're all, they're, they're all over the place, the images. It's so great. It's so great. I love the, the, the description of, of all of that you have just given. It's really, um, yeah, sure is. It has a lot of meaning and, uh, and uh, I could relate very well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we all get old. <laughs> yeah, I, I love how you all get to share uh, what you all do because so many of us are, you know, uh, sequestered in our own little studio and our own little space all day long and don't listen to MSNBC all day long and we're there painting, doing our stuff. And so great, this is a great opportunity for those of you to share with other artists 
and let you know what you're going through too. And uh, trust me, I can guarantee you the communication to other artists who are playing in their studios and doing experimental art like this is spectacular. I can only imagine the luxury we have that we can do it electronically. Whereas back in the French Impressionist days or in the early uh, New York City days, they only had to talk to each other down there in the pubs and beat each other up and nobody knew what they were all doing, but they wanted to share what they were doing. What a luxury we have. We can do it so quickly without beating each other up, I guess. I don't know what the heck. <laughs> Interestingly, I listen to news all day and do this at the same time. Yeah, at the same time. <laughs> you can, you can no, thank you. Thank you. you. Balance, thank that balance, I know, I know. Hey, uh, Suzanne, I think you're up next. Um, Let's see. Um, I got three pieces in, and two are collage, but one is a digital piece. Okay, let and me photography. Uh, it's called again. Thoughts Become Things. Uh, you're early in the alphabet, so you should be easy to find. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it earlier. There it is. There you are. Uh, which one again? Yeah, that one. Thoughts this Become one. Things. Okay. The digital one. Yeah. The reason I am selecting this piece is because it's a cautionary tale piece. Uh, the other two pieces were collage uh, on paper. And uh, several years ago, I, I started doing photography. And I don't consider myself a photographer at all, but uh, it really spoke to me. So. I was downtown Los Angeles attending an art reception and um, I hadn't been down there for a long time. This was pre-COVID and uh, on 6th and South uh, 7th Street is this incredible mural and it's called Our Lady of Downtown LA. I didn't know what it was called then. I just was thunderstruck by it. And I didn't know who the artist was who did the mural. So, you know, I was taking photos of this incredible mural. And inside windows, there was a millinery shop, there was a, a record shop. And uh, so I just combined these images. Uh, and there's one that was in, in a, uh, a hat shop and it was a sign that said thoughts. And so, it triggered me to um, many years ago, it's a, a thing that you can subscribe to on the computer and it's called Tut, uh, the universe. And it's every day Tut responds with some profound thought that is, uh, they're funny and uh, very loving and very encouraging. And at the end of it, it's all very spiritual. And it's thoughts become things that we have to be careful what we think about because what we think about sometimes manifests. So if our thoughts are negative, so on and so forth. So I call that thoughts become things. The reason it's a cautionary tale, uh, there are copyright issues that we uh, collage artists have to deal with at times. This is a very large print. I used to to show at a, a former, uh, was called Los Angeles Center for Digital Art. And I was represented artist there. And it's no longer, unfortunately. So this is a very large print. And um, I had it framed and I've shown it in a couple of shows. I was, uh, <laughs> I had this piece and another piece using this same image of Our Lady of Downtown LA another very large print. And I had it in a show and um, somebody who knew the muralist came to that exhibit and contacted the organizer of the show and said, uh, take those pieces down immediately. That is my art. Mm -hmm. I was so stunned my art so she did not take them down immediately the show was almost over 
And my husband, who's a former attorney, said, I told you there may be problems with this. You have to be careful, uh, you know, copyright issues and so on and so forth. Well, when you're taking photos and it's in of people or in a public place, uh, you think that it's public property. It's, it's okay to take a photo of it. So I realized that I didn't really know who the artist was and frantically looked it up and it's actually in there, Vargas. So I went online and in every, every place I had these images, uh, I gave credit to the, the muralist who I guess is a son of a gun anyway. <laughs> um, but it was a shocking experience to me uh, to have this happen. So um, that's, I, it's just a cautionary tale for all of you using images, uh, even cutting things out of magazines. When I first started doing collage, uh, I used to use, um, um, what is it? <laughs> anyway, I was taking images out of a magazine and collaging them over defunct watercolors. And I still, I still have them. I've sold several. They're still wonderful. And they were my very first collages. And a, a company that, uh, that did postcards and uh, things like that wanted to use these images. And they wrote me back. They said, our committee, um, loves these uh, pieces. We really wanted to use them, but we're really afraid of copyright images, uh, issues that right. some of the things somebody might, might identify as theirs. Uh, uh, so I'm sorry, we have to reject you. So anyway, Bob, you might have some comments about that. Oh, I do. Oh, I do. I'm listening to your experience. And it's a great, you did everything right, by the way. You did everything right. And that's how we found out too, early on and about copyright, uh, which is interesting. And I'm not gonna give a whole long dissertation on copyright, but um, yeah, um, <clears throat> it's one of the reasons I don't use photographs and images out of any magazine or any newspaper. For that reason, it's that simple. I make my own images, I make my own uh, paper uh, graphics. I make my own squares and my own uh, stars and stripes, and I make my own lines, and I Xerox them at, at the Xerox place at different sizes. That way, number one, I own the rights. I mean, they're not perfect, and that's the whole point. And, and I own those that, that artwork. Well, I'm not worried about anybody copying them. But the point is, I, I don't go to a a craft art store and buy books that have, you know, these pre-printed, you know, patterns. You they're know, copyright free. They're copyright free. But I, but the problem with that is that they're all the same and everybody's yeah. art the same. And I yeah. didn't want to do that. I mean, bless their hearts, but I like to make my own. So there you go. So I do it in black or white. And I only do black and white when I do my collages. So if you see my collage books, it just starts off with black and white. And after it dries, I'm gonna change the color anyway. So at least I get the design and the patterns down. So I do it in black and white with just the paper. And, uh, <clears throat> and so I have no problem with copyright. And so many people are so worried and concerned about copyright. I'm just gonna say this, and then I won't say anything else because I know I'm gonna really get everybody all excited. I'm gonna say this. As soon as you finish your artwork, everybody, as soon as you finish your artwork, your husband who's an attorney will know this. As soon as you finish your artwork and you sign it, are you ready, everybody? You own the rights to that image for the rest of your life plus 78 years after your death. I'm going to say it again because you're going to say, what? And this is the truth. As soon as you sign your name to your artwork, do not put that copyright circle C. It means nothing next to your name. God, it makes it, in fact, it makes your painting look like a print. Don't put the circle C next to your name. It means nothing. You sign your name. As soon as you do, you own the rights 
to that image for the rest of your life plus 78 years after your death. You can either go to my website or go to my book, and, you know, work with a good attorney. They'll tell you the same thing. So there's so much wrong information out there. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I've been I just, reluctant to show, it's been, I've been reluctant to show the pieces after that. He, yeah. he, uh, son of a gun. Usually uh, since no. then, when I've taken photos of murals, and yeah. the muralist is there. Oh, I yeah. have asked for permission. Can sure. I? And you you know, I've, and you I'm photographing this. Can I use it in my work? Oh, absolutely. You know, I. No, I, and you, you should. Know. And and that's yeah. the right. Proper but thing. I didn't know this guy, yeah. but yeah. Uh, he does have a reputation of being a pretty not real cooperative. Well, so. good for you. I mean. It's nice to be a pretty lady, so that helps a whole lot. So, and you, and you, and you, and you ask nicely too. That really works a whole lot. But not ego, really, and and that's a anyway. Good but and thank you a, for selecting it. Well, thank no, yeah, no. thank you. Yeah. you. That's one of the nice things about this. I don't know who's who, and just <laughs> do these selections. And again, I, I'll go go back and uh, when I I choose an image, it's the ones that's like. I've seen it before, or I haven't seen it before. And if it stops me in my track, or I mean, it raises the question, and it's not being weird just for the sake of being weird. I mean, anybody can be weird, but if it doesn't have a good, strong message and communicates anything close to the title, I always go to the title, everybody. I should, uh, you know that. You don't I was going to ask you that, you know, yeah, uh, always. if titles are important to you. Oh boy, oh boy! If you don't have a title, I don't, I don't want to try and figure out what, you, what you, the heck you're talking about. I mean, give me an idea, give me a break, and and give everybody else a break. They're looking at your painting at a big museum, and they say, "What the heck?" Well, then you, you just lost them. You lost them, and you're not doing what what you're supposed to be doing. And I do believe this strongly that an artist is here to communicate and it doesn't matter how you communicate it just matters that you do and it's pretty simple and if you don't want to communicate then i'm not interested in listening to you I'm just blabbing away no thank you both those that's very uh, important and and uh, interesting and information that we need thank, uh, thank both of you suzanne and bob thank you no, well uh, who is next? Uh, uh, Carol Barnes, I have next. Um, let's see. And uh, that's Gerald, as in Jerry. Gerald Barnes, right? Yeah, that's me. This is you. Uh, which image do you want me the to? The one you're on, that, that one is fine, the falling boxes. No, the next oh, one. The other one. Okay. Yeah. Mm. yeah, that one. All right. Okay, hi everybody. Hi, Bob. I did take a class with you several years ago. <laughs> I, I do I, remember. I do remember. You do? <laughs> well, because it's so strong. Your work is so strong. Yeah, I do. Go ahead. Well, I really, I really appreciate Project. The, this show is fantastic, and I really appreciate your contribution to it. Yeah. And I always admire Bob because, uh, you know, I don't, I don't mean it disparagingly, but Bob is so loosey goosey. I'm so anal when I do my work, <laughs> and part part of the reason we're taking his class was try to loosen up. But in any case. Um, so what I've been doing recently in these larger pieces, again, some of the feedback I got was from people saying, you know, you need to work larger. So that's fine. I had a couple of panels. I prefer to work on wood panels, to be honest with you, because they take a little more yeah. abuse, you know, when you need to sand them down or, or paint over or whatever. Yeah. And these, these series that I'm doing, I call them layers. Obviously, it's pretty, pretty obvious. Right? So I've been doing like horizontal uh, panels and with the images. And uh, this is both, both a curse and <laughs> a blessing because actually what I'm forcing myself to do is actually to do two or three paintings in one. <laughs> and wow. and to, how, yeah. to see how they all can connect to each other. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, might, I might start off great, like even with the abstract piece at the bottom and then I'm thinking, oh God, now what can I do? <laughs> what can I do in the next panel? 
I and think it's a great concept. It's a great concept. Good for you. <laughs> and so yeah. I think, uh, you know, I'm retired now and I'm getting older and I keep thinking, you know, if I want to put a narrative on this, is this kind of layers like, uh, you know, geological layers, <laughs> you're going back millions of years with one layer over another. And I'm thinking, I'm a, am I kind of digging down through my life? I have no yeah. idea. I, yeah. I'm not in therapy or anything, but it might be a good question if I was. Um, yeah. <laughs> The, what I what I like uh, I, the medium I use actually is chalk paint. That's what I'm using now. If you're oh. familiar with it, uh, you know people have used it for stressed furniture yeah. and all that kind yeah. of stuff. The reason I like it, it's very flat. It dries very quickly, and it has a kind of a little bit of texture in it. And um, if you go to remove it to scrape over it or whatever, you can get actually fantastic um, yeah. textures when you work in it. The downside to it is it has very limited colors. And so if you look at any of my work the last couple of years, right. you might think, by God, he hasn't stretched his palette very much. No, 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 no. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me say a few comments for you. Let me help you out here. Okay, can I, are you ready to get some little bit of help from me? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm ready to have, first of all, I love your enthusiasm on your artwork, number one. Number two, um, uh, the finishing uh, about it, you can put a varnish on top of these. Mm. You know, and you should put a varnish since you're using all these pastels and uh, different wonderful things. And uh, you can use the spray varnish. Which it's called Spectrafix. And it's made just for these mixed media type of paintings. It's uh, basically Spectrafix is pure cas casein, casein, by the way which is milk without whey. And your work is so perfect for it. Uh, it's milk, it's a casein, it's milk without whey. And you put several coats of your pump spray it on. Mm -hmm. uh, at, at least four to five or six layers of this. And that will protect your paintings since you're using multimedia, which is so beautiful, by the way. Thank you. And I, I don't want you to change. I, I love your drawing and scraping and scratching. And I love the fact that you bring in multiple paintings and, and putting them together. I, I enjoy doing that also. You get this mixed kind of a um, decoupage kind of a feeling to it. I, I just love it very much. Your color sense is beautiful. Oh. Boy, I you do so, so many more of these. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, with the, with the palette so limited. <laughs> <laughs> it's that's like what color I use next. No, that's your lim no, that's your advantage. You don't have all this goofy colors, and so that's your advantage. You say, "Oh, I have a limited palette." I'm going to say, "Yay!" <laughs> no, really, that's that, that is fantastic. You know, you don't have to worry about all these different, you know, complementary colors and all that. You use with what you got, and you know, you're going to be actually more creative with the limited palette. Mm. Mm. I am going to tell you that right now. You are going to be more creative with a limited palette. So thank you. I think you're, no, thank you. You're doing a great job. Nice to meet you. And I can't wait to see more of your work. Yeah, great. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Enjoy talking. Right. My thank pleasure you. too. Right. Nice to chat with you. Anybody right. else? Thank you both. Uh, Susie, uh, Susie Gesundheit. Um, let's see if I can find you here. I am. This is so uh, nice. Which one would you part. like me to show? Oh, a uh, reality check. Reality check. Okay. Oh, no, not reality check. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I'm now, I know I'm here listening to you about titles, so. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, no. Oh, well, um, that's, the, that's the thing. And that is the thing. I mean, that's another whole workshop I give, believe it or not, of coming up with titles. Right. How do you name your painting? And, and the thing that just drives me nuts before we get to your painting, and what drives me nuts is people who are uh, posting their images of their paintings on Facebook and asking you if the painting is done, and also then asking you what the title should be. I just want to slap them. I don't know what I just want to <laughs> okay, but, but what part I want to say what part of your life are you responsible for? You see that? You see how I get frustrated listening to people saying that, asking other people's opinions 
when it's done. So, and I, my, my wise ass question, and I won't ask it though, is why did you start it in the first place? What enticed you to do it in the first place? What got you going in the first place? When I mean, there's your title, by the way. There's well, your title. The irony is the title that I titled means more now. It was titled actually to, before the pandemic, and now it means yeah. now that it did yeah. uh, did it. It was sort of a foretelling. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's basically. You see how it's important. I mean, if I gave you a title, well, I do my other workshops, not in this one, but in my other workshop, I. <laughs> Those poor people. <laughs> These are three minute paintings, three minute paintings. And I give them the title and they have three minutes to communicate that painting in those three minutes and it's just black and white. And mm -hmm. I give them the title. So when someone looks at the painting, they say, oh, you must be thinking of that title, blah, 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 blah. So it's a great way to kind of get you, even yourselves, uh, which I do myself, uh, into my kind of the creative side uh, in early in the morning. It's like my Pilates. It's like my stretching exercises mentally. And it gets me there really fast. And I have to think about anything else. So anyway, it's, it's just one of the things that I do. So. Oh, well. so, so I'm looking at this painting. And why am I looking at this painting? Why are you? Yeah, yeah. Am I I'm telling sorry. you? Well, Susan going to say something. Am I going to tell you? Well, this yeah. one, no, well, I, um, for She's me, the reality, reality check, it was about, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. well, it's sort of a pensive thing. But it's sort of like how I feel now. <laughs> like what and when? She's asking you for a comment. Oh, yeah. back to what, was the, what was the title of this painting? Reality check. Oh, yeah. Wait, hold on a second. So what does that mean to you? Well, to me, just about you know our situation now. It's just it's a you know, uh, just kind of a, yeah trying to wrap head around it. Your head around. Yeah. It. yeah. And, no. Um, really. Yeah, and the the it's symbol tough. of the hand is a um, it's actually a uh, like a Jewish symbol of um, what is it like the evil eye? It's like a protection. Yeah. It's a, yeah. It's a, it's a protection. Yeah. It, it's a tough. It's a tough. It's a tough uh, message. To get across and 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 is so full of information, you know, an awful lot to get into a painting. Oh my gosh, yeah. Anyway. So when you have, here's my suggestion: when you have such an enormous subject, I mean, it's an enormous subject from the day one of life. And how do you you um, get it down to just one point of you know, the, the atrocity of it or, mm -hmm. or the other things that you're feeling about it. And how do you get that one point across? You know. Um, well, the symbol was sort of the, you know, it's a protection symbol, which I think. Yeah, the protection thing. That could be the protection. <laughs> protection. I mean, Jesus Christ. Think about what do they all need or what could we give? Mm. It's, it's like that. I mean, how much involvement do I want to be involved? Can I give uh, yes. with what limitations I have, my skill, can I do it with artwork or can I do it with messaging? I mean, it's a, it's a big deal. I mean, this is not a simple subject. Yeah. And I don't think you can do it in one painting. You might want to think about doing it in several paintings. I kind of feel that 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 uh, in a reality check, you kind of put yourself down and say, "This is me, where I am, and what I have." Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you limit it to your own circumstances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I pray that you be protected in handling yeah. what you can deal with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see that too then this I mean I can see some protective walls panels behind the figure you know uh, anyway it's it's the beginning of a good painting I mean I know what I would do it to it but then the problem is it becomes um, my painting well, I, I, tend to, to, I, I tend I to be want, unfinished <laughs> you tend to be unfinished I think so I get to a certain point I think it's a decision okay. process too okay. That's and okay. okay with it, and I'm I'm not I don't produce polished. I, I don't. Good. I, I don't. Then don't. 
then don't. Fragments. Then don't. I'm giving <laughs> you Or it's an excuse not to finish. <laughs> <laughs> then don't. Right. Well, so I have a, we uh, have a because it would it would feel unnatural for you. It would be yeah. like you're forcing it, and I don't want you to force it. And it's going to come naturally later on. But it's it's okay. You don't have to finish a painting, so right. to speak. Um, I mean, another level. Painter, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it might take us. People say, "How long did it take you to do the painting?" Well, sometimes it might be three years, but you might have, you know, left it and abandoned, it, gone somewhere else. And so, no, it's not not about that. You finish it when you're ready to finish it. So, okay. Well, so we'll don't beat yourself up. You know, we'll unframe so, it. We'll unframe it, and then we'll finish it. <laughs> oh, never. Never frame them. Oh, no, never frame them. Okay, what's next? Well, that's right. right no let's... framing. If you adhere no. to the yeah, panels. No. 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 Okay. Um, I'm sorry, Susie. I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, S.P. Harper, did you want to talk? Yes, please. You are. Okay. No. Thank you, Robert, for being our jury in our show. It's no. fabulous. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you. Mixed metaphor, such a good title. Yeah. Takes me so many places. Um, I like the um, abstract geometric of a gem. And a gem, this particular one is a um, brilliant cup diamond. A diamond is carbon, which is the most hardest long lasting material in the world. But yet my diamond that I'm making here is merely made out of papers and recycled papers and um, they will not last. And they're very delicate compared to a mm. diamond. Um, and this is called brilliant cut, which is that diamond is forever. You know, people um, wear diamonds when they get married and it symbolizes forever. Um, but these are paper and that's a map in the background. And um, that's gonna fade. And a lot of those papers I drew on them and there's some tissue papers, they are gonna fade. And that's kind of interesting to me over time, it's gonna change. Some, some inks are kind of permanent, like the fract. Um, mm -hmm. Most of stamps might last, but some won't. Um, some you know, have metal in them and they're iridescent, they'll last, but then some, the others won't. Um, also just the materials themselves, that's an old fashioned map. Um, that we, we used to keep in our cars, um, we would fold out and now we use GPS. There's no use for these kind of maps anymore. Um, and um, I, I liked, I'm, I'm ecocentric. It's just part of my being. I've always been a recycler. So this is uh, recycling, it's um, upcycling um, work. Um, it's taking junk basically, you know, I could have thrown away these things. And I'm trying to create a treasure from the junk. And um, it's ba basically bits and pieces that are really undesirable and I'm trying to make them desirable. So I, I'm interested in that kind of a twist, bringing things back to life. And it's, it's, these are personal for me in that um, I'm, I'm very attracted to these cuts of gems. And um, I, I don't know why, I don't, I don't wear diamonds, you know, I, I just have, I don't have one for my wedding wing, but I love them. And whenever I go into a museum, I'm very <laughs> attracted to that section in the Natural History Museum, looking at the oh. text. Um, and um, it's my abstract geometric. And mm -hmm. I'm realizing maybe it is because my grandfather was a diamond cutter. So oh. maybe I'm channeling him, I don't know. Um, so uh, yes, and okay, my mom passed away in 2019. So. That's her map from her car, and those are all of her wrapping papers. So it's it's personal too for me. Um, of course, exploration, um, and then um, yes, um, um, Quilin. Those look like gemstones to me, but I looked at them really closely, and they were look like marigold flowers. So I'm going to explore the flower and the petals as um, facets. So anyway, that was really interesting to me. I've learned a lot tonight and it was a fabulous, fabulous show. Congratulations well, to everybody. Thank uh, you. Well, we listened to everybody. Did you hear her passion for what she does? I mean, <laughs> every artist needs to have that kind of a passion and to be that articulate about what it is that they do. And, uh, and, her work, and your work shows it, by the way. Thank you, by the way, 
for showing us your passion because it's so important to have you uh, talk about what it is you do and why you do it. And I mean, we may not even know what it is you're talking about, but to see more, really, seriously, but to, to hear your passion and it, 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 it moves over into whatever areas that we're all personally involved in. It might be uh, something a lot simpler than than doing these collages, you know, these gems and collages and shapes. It might be something a little bit simpler, but just, I don't know, colored pencils. But it's got to be something you absolutely uh, are passionate about. And that's, that's the secret. You have to really want to be in your studio. I always like to say you don't have to know how to paint. You just have to want to paint. Comes down to that, folks. Comes down to that. And uh, we all don't jump into this business because we know what we're doing. We do it because we just love to do this kind of work. Isn't that crazy? That's just wonderful. Anyway, it's great to see your presentation and I appreciate your seeing your gems and, and, and the reason why you, you paint. So thank you for sharing. I hope everybody else kind of picked up on that energy too. You what did. else we got? All right, what else we got? Thank you, Bob. Um, okay, um, Diane Camera. Let's see if I can get my cursor where it's supposed to be. Hi. And lost at C. It's this on the right hand side. side. Yep. Yeah, hi, everybody. This is such an interesting discussion. Um, yeah, thank you, Bob. We saw each other last year. Yeah, I did, did a workshop with you last year. I remember, I remember yeah. you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is a metaphor for just feeling lost in your mind. It, I started yeah. with this boat theme, but, but the idea was really, um, I did it just after the war in Ukraine started, and I kept hearing people around me just so, uh, just at a loss for, to understand yeah. why it was happening. Like, why yeah. would they bomb people? And yeah. um, so that that was the idea, and mm. just the idea of feeling lost and not understanding, yeah, like yeah, kind of in a fog. Jeez. And I use my own artwork in this, and yeah. uh, except for a few pieces, um, the water and part of the boat is from magazines, but yeah. uh, and I and I drew on it also. So there's quite a few layers, and acrylic paint and charcoal pencil and. I like to see faces in my work and kind of mm. enhance them. So that th there's a lot of faces in there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was yeah. my my idea of the metaphor. Yeah, I, I see the isolation and wanting to be isolated. I see I see like a bubble uh, around the boat. You know, that's what I how I see it. Is I mean, it's funny that there'd be a bubble around a boat. For, for me, a, a boat is having a bubble around I sail, I'm a sailor. Uh, mm -hmm. Kate and I go down to the Caribbean for those particular reasons and we take a boat just for ourselves for 10 days for all those reasons. And you've just captured it right there while it's still sitting on dockside. It's the bubble. And I always like to say, though, wherever you go in life, the bubble goes with you. So, I mean, you're never escaping away. You're never going towards something. It still is with you. So yeah. I love the metaphor of this particular piece a lot, you know, and it just felt like, yeah, I'm in that boat or I'm not in that boat. So I, I understand that I didn't go really deep in, into the metaphor, but I certainly stood it. I, I understood it. So I thought it was a nice piece. Good for you. Okay. Good for you. And, Thanks very and much. You explained it so well, too. Oh, so. Well, thank you. I'm, I appreciate being uh, having my pieces included in the show, and I really like the show. It's, there's such interesting work in it. I really yeah, like it them all. It, it's very thought provoking. I thought, and you know, and I thought that was yeah. important for everyone to see everybody else's thoughts. So <laughs> it's, it's pretty diverse, which I think is great. Yeah. Different techniques. Yeah. Thank you again for entering that and showing us that. Painting. Thanks, Bob. Uh, you guys are doing good here. It's so much fun for me. 
Is there anyone else that has offered to uh, talk about their work? I am not seeing anyone. Uh, it's painless. I'm here. Right. Who? Who is that? Carol Tannenbaum. Oh. Oh, oh, oh wow. Oh. Did you just join us? I'm happy to just join you. I just got home from an what event that I went to. Okay, well, Ka uh, Carol is our uh, Carol Ann Watterson Award winner. Oh. Yay. Yay. The Rise and Shine Can't Push Back yeah. the Day from Happening. So, yeah, this is the one we, uh, Bob talked about this a little earlier, Ka uh, Carol, but Perhaps now you can tell us uh, your um, your yeah, feelings. Hi, welcome, it. welcome, Carol. I'm glad you are able to make it. I know. I just just walked in <laughs> right this minute. I'm <laughs> just can't begin to tell you how honored I am and thrilled to be part of this. Um, wow. So I don't know where to start here with this piece. Oh. Well, thank you for your contribution, and I really thought, I, I mean, I thought the, the piece itself had a strong message. I love the design. First of all, I, I was attracted to the simple design, and I wasn't realizing what was going on at first. I didn't get the message, but I kept going back to the, the simplicity of the design and the almost the silliness of it. And it just was not fussy. And then I realized, oh my gosh, I see what's going on here. So it, it, I kept coming back to it. And I, I love how the painter uh, was able to communicate the concept of, of the whole show. So I, I just thought it was fabulous. I, and I didn't know your name was going to be associated with it. So I'm so glad that you have it. So, yay. Well, um... First of all, I'm a psychologist. I'm not, I, and I'm an artist as a, mm -hmm. as a passion. Yeah. And um, I have a long history. So, and you're right, things are very complex, very, yeah. very complex. And I love the idea of a mixed metaphor because yeah. I live in complexities and I mm. live in paradoxes. Mm. And I, um, and I'm also a practicing Buddhist, Zen Buddhist, mm -hmm. which is a is the world of paradoxes. Mm -hmm. So when this show came up, I was like really excited. <laughs> um, it this is actually my New Year's painting. This is a painting I painted uh, at New Year's, and. Um, I mean, you can see it's just, it's a simple collage piece. That's nice. Which sometimes yeah. you get and sometimes you just don't, don't but this just yeah. kind of worked, okay? Yeah. Very, very. Yeah. And, um, and I'm more frequently using a lot of red now because I mm -hmm. really, really, really like it. So, mm -hmm. and the figures, honestly, for years, I taught, um, my background is, my, actually, my background is in war trauma. Mm -hmm. And I ran a children's program in the Balkans for 20 years. So I am completely um, taken with children's art and mm -hmm. the, the simplicity of it and the naturalness mm -hmm. of it and the mm -hmm. feeling that comes through. So this, when I hit this, it, it hit for me too. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and you know, I try to be, my art has taken on a much more, it's much more beautiful these days. It's not as dark as it used to be. Mm -hmm. I, it's hopeful. It's uh, good. Life affirming. Yeah. Uh, because after many, many years of working in very, dark places, I honestly do believe in the capacity for resilience. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, no matter what, the world moves on. Okay. No matter what, that's like rise and shine, yeah. meet the day. Yeah. 
the it world's going to move on anyway. Yeah, it does. And it may seem blows me away. So I'm, I'm so glad they have the routine of going to the studio every day. I mean, every day, nothing else changes. So that's so I've learned to accept that. Thank you for that. That you're absolutely right on about that. And well, it's I liked everything about this, the Zen of hmm. this, if I say that, and the simplicity of it with not a very complicated message. So I, I, I guess I was kept drawn to this. So I was so pleased to see someone drawing some figures with the message. It was pretty nice. And, and, I, and I know you didn't have to do this, uh, everybody, but uh, I was certainly looking for a reason to give everything a title. And I'm, I'm a real firm believer about giving a painting a title first, mm -hmm. first, not last. And this always oh. surprised everybody. Okay. I know. Think about it. Okay. Think about it. Think okay. about it. Uh, because then how do I know when the painting's done? When it matches the title. Okay. And, 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 and what everyone's doing is posting their paintings and asking everybody else. If their painting is done, how <laughs> unfair is that? I mean, how do they know they didn't do it? They don't even know why you did it. And then they ask, can you give me a name for the, oh my gosh, I just want to go up and slap them. I mean, why did you do the painting at the beginning? And what's the point? What was the point? Because if someone tells you what to do with your painting, if somebody else gives you a title, guess what? Now it's their painting now it's their you know. now it's their painting and you do not have any ownership mm -hmm. so i'm a little bit of a hard ass on this about people getting ownership of what it is you are trying to do in the first place and don't give me responsibility for your indecision i know i'm a hard ass about this and oh. i said if you're, going to show, if you're going to show me your work show me your work don't show me somebody else's work and ask me what the opinion should be because it's not your work. I want to, I want to see you. I want to see you in the painting. And I'm real hard ass about that, by the way. Uh, boy, when you're finished with my workshops, you really get to know how to paint. Okay, enough, enough of that. Enough of that. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, Sylvia. That, oh, no, no, that's all right. Everybody needs to hear that. Uh, but <laughs> congratulate congratulations, Carol, uh, and along with all of the other uh, award winners, congratulations, congratulations. Uh, did we have anybody else that wanted to talk about their piece, um, Pat or Barbara? I'll be nice. I'll be I nice. am not seeing anyone. Oh, you're nice, Barbara. <laughs> Bob, you're nice. You're, that's what you're telling us is important stuff. I think so. I mean, no, that has nothing to do every day. That has nothing to do with being nice or mean. So no, I mean, I mean, I go through this every day. I, I journal every day. I really highly suggest that. And, and okay. I get all those, I get all that monkey chatter out of my head uh, <laughs> in my in my journal. And you all know what that means. And so I'm so I'm so clear when I go to paint every day after I get all that stuff out of my head. Good. So I, I, I don't text people. I don't email people. I do my journaling. Thank you, Julia Cameron, the artist way. And I do my papers and I'm so clear. And I want this to happen to you too, because I know when you, oh boy, I had the whole day to paint. And you go to your studio or the place you paint and you're just like, I'm so confused. I don't know what I want to do. You, you go through that. So I'm Thanks. just telling people, breathe stop write in your journal if you took a magic pill if you took a magic pill what would you and you woke up what would you love to be painting it's that simple thanks and anything Bob. you come up and anything you come up with well if you're not doing it what's the problem so there's that's how you paint so thanks for the opportunity for me to look at all your work i want you guys to have the piece of the pie it's a beautiful pie out there, <laughs> you know, but you got to paint every day. Thanks again, Sylvia, for putting all this together. I'm available if anybody has any more questions. 
All right, now I want to know, uh, first of all, is there anyone else, uh, Barbara or Pat, that is, uh, wants to speak about their piece? Mm. I, am, in I am not seeing anyone in the chat, so okay. someone should holler really quick if they want. All right, well, in that case, I want to once again congratulate an, uh, all the award winners. I want uh -huh. to congratulate all the the people that have been selected and are in this wonderful show that Bob has juried. Um, I'm, I'd like to also mention, uh, uh, if you're not familiar with the CAA Facebook page, where you can find wonderful, inspiring art, uh, please visit that. And uh, I also want to remind you of and thank, I want to thank Quaylin Lum, who is our newsletter editor because she always puts out a delightful newsletter filled with news, interesting information, art from our members. Uh, you should go through the whole thing, sc scan the whole thing and be blown away by all the information she has in that newsletter for you. Um, we also, I'm just gonna mention briefly and you'll hear more about it from our committee on, on our election that's coming up in May. So please be uh, on the alert for uh, any ballots and information about it that come your way. Uh, I'd like to now um, ask if there is anyone uh, that has any comments they'd like to make um, about the exhibit or about CAA, now is the time. Just- uh, oh, Sylvia? Yeah. It's Suzanne. Uh, I'm membership chair of Collage Artists of America, and I just want to say I am so proud. We have so many awards in, with brand new members. I mean, like within the last three weeks or so. Uh, some are repeat uh, new members who have gotten awards in the last couple of shows. So I'm so proud of all of you. you just uh, such a great job. Thank you for joining. Uh, it's just a great organization. We've been at it for a long time. And um, it's this Zoom platform. I, I love it, actually. I think that it has really broadened our membership. We almost have a third of our membership now that is out of state. And uh, we have international members like Trudy Sissions, who uh, won first place. Uh, she, she's from Canada. <coughs> And so anyway, even if we have brick and mortar um, <coughs> meetings again, we've got to continue this Zoom platform so that we can uh, have all of you be with us. I mean, it just even our board members, two of our board members are out of state. So anyway, I just wanted to say I'm proud of all of our members. Thanks, Suzanne. Thank you. Quaylin, you have something you want to say? I just wanted to say that we're having elections in May and the ballots are going to be sent to you by email in uh, like about April 18th. Please vote, please vote. We want a quorum. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, okay, uh, any other comments uh, that anybody might like to make? Well, I'm gonna just once again say thank you to Bob Burridge for the wonderful show that he has provided us. And uh, I am happy to see so many of you attending the reception. Uh, be sure and uh, come to our general meeting in May where we will be announcing the new board or is that when we get our tally for votes? How does that <laughs> tell me, remind me? I, you were on mute, Suzanne. We will be announcing. I don't it. think we. We will be announcing. So please attend our May because that's the last meeting. We then break for summer and won't be meeting again till September. So we'll see you in May. Happy trails. <laughs> thank you, Sylvia, and thank you, uh, wonderful art organization. Oh, yes. thank you, I want to say a special thanks to. Barbara Tabachnik and Pat Bates for handling our uh, technical and giving us the show. And remember too, that it'll be recorded. 
you can see a recording or tell other friends to see the recording of the reception on uh, you'll find it on our web page and i think that's it anybody else okay <laughs> thank you all yeah.